I want to take you to a couple of New Testament texts. This is a time where uh, we want to exhort one another and encourage one another based on the, the truth that we've heard. And to do that, I want to take you, there's a direct line from this prophecy in Isaiah to a couple of passages in the New Testament. I want to just highlight this real quickly and, and then make a, a quick uh, application and then we'll open the, the time for any of you to have some responses and comments. The first text I would take you to is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul says this, I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, yeah. nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. In other words, the bodies that we have and everything in this world is going to pass away. It's perishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound... And the dead will be raised imperishable. That's what Isaiah was prophesying about in, in that text. And we shall be changed. For this perishable, this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, speaking of laying down these, these mortal bodies and putting on a new immortal body, then shall come to pass the saying that is written. And this is directly from our text. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? And we know that Isaiah's prophecy was pointing towards the fact that Jesus was going to defeat death by his own resurrection. Death has already been defeated in the resurrection of Christ. We're just waiting for the time Amen. when death will be put away for good. Amen. Someday death is going to die. And there's going to come a time when death will no longer be hanging over the human race. Amen. In the world to come, no one will die. We will have immortal bodies and live in a world that is no longer stained by sin and death. And that takes me to the next passage that Isaiah really was pointing towards. Uh, in the book of the Revelation, at the very end of the Bible, John saw what Isaiah was talking about in the text that, that Brother Gene read for us and preached on for us tonight. In Revelation 21, John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, speaking of the glorified church. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. There's a new world coming, brethren. Yes. A new creation. We know that this creation is under a curse because of sin. Death is the curse of sin. And one day this world is going to completely pass away. So let's remember tonight, and I know all of you know this, but it's good for us to remember that nothing we have in this world is going to last forever. Our bodies are going to get old or yeah. sick and we're going to die. Yeah. Uh, the world itself is going, is going to pass away. We can't keep anything that we now have yeah. except for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Underneath, underneath everything that we see there is something that is solid and secure and unchanging, and that is the kingdom of God. Yes. To be even more precise, it's God Himself. Amen. There is a kingdom, it says in the book of Hebrews, that cannot be shaken. And we're putting our hope in that kingdom. We're not putting our hope in anything in this world. So let me just exhort you. I know that we live in a generation that really has lost hope. Our, our generation doesn't have a lot to look forward to. Have you noticed that? People are, people are in a state of, of fear and despair in this generation. Yes. There's a lot of things people are afraid of. It seems like there's a lot to be afraid of these days. And God's people should not live like that. We should not live in fear. 
We should not be like the pagans who are always worried. Remember Jesus said, don't be like the, the pagans who are always in a state of anxiety. What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what are we going to wear? It seems like the, the world is in that kind of a, of a state right now. There's a state of anxiety and fear and worry about what's going to happen. Well, in a sense, we already know what's going to happen. We already know the future. This world is going to pass away, and there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. And it's our business right now to make sure that we, when that time happens, either when we leave the body or when Jesus comes and this whole world leaves and a new world comes in, it's our business now to make sure that when that new order comes in, that we fit. That's our job. We can't keep anything here, so we, we let it all go. We let the world go, and we embrace this kingdom that cannot be shaken so that when this world does actually go away, and it is actually going to go away someday, when that happens, we will enter into our eternal home, our true home, which is the new heavens and the new earth. So, so my exhortation to you is let's not let the anxiety and fear of the world Amen. creep into our own lives. Amen. Let's not find ourselves acting like pagans who don't know God and worrying about tomorrow Amen. and worrying about these, these things that are really for God or nothing. It's not anything for God to clothe us or feed us or provide. This is really nothing for If God can make a new heavens and a new earth, He can take care of feeding us and clothing us and making sure that we're okay while we are uh, pilgrims through this world. Amen. So let's not, let's not live in fear. Let's put our hope in the living God. Amen. Do any of you have anything you'd like to say or add tonight?